Yeah. So yeah. Jess, I one of the things that I'm I'm excited to dig in with you about is how this works when we're when we're talking with other people around gender specifically. Yeah. Well, so one thing, great that you asked, pronouns. Pronouns, uh, we hear a whole lot about pronouns. People will get confused about the singular they or folks use a pronoun to refer to themselves that maybe other folks haven't heard before or it doesn't even sound like a word. So I thought we would start out by just defining what a pronoun is. So Alex, could you please tell me what is a pronoun? I am so glad you asked. Here's the actual literal definition of a pronoun. A pronoun is a word that can function by itself as a noun phrase that refers either to the participants in the discourse, example, I or you, or to someone or something mentioned elsewhere in the discourse. Well, that's a nice definition from my English textbook, but to me, a pronoun is really a placeholder for personhood. It's the word we go to when we're referring to someone or something that can stand in for that person when we're not using their name. Can you share some examples of pronouns? So some of the pronouns we may be most familiar with are she, her, hers, or he, him, his. I said at the beginning that I use he, him, his, but I identify as male, and that's the typically used male pronoun. But there are also a really great range of pronouns that identify folks who go beyond a male or female identity. So they, them, theirs, and then both the pronoun that begins with X and the pronoun that begins with Z are pronounced Z, Zim, Zir. And then, of course, there's always the option to just say someone's name, particularly if you're not sure what pronouns that they use and if someone has specifically asked for that as, as their kind of pronoun. So when we're introducing some pronouns that maybe you feel like you haven't heard before, I want to draw some attention to the ways in which, particularly with the use of the pronoun they and them, we already use those in the English language to refer to a singular subject, aka one person. Normally they and them can be a plural pronoun for uh, our friends went to the movies and they had a great time for example. But as we're saying here, they and them is a singular pronoun. And while that may feel like news to, to some of us, I want to underline ways in which they and them are already in operation in the English language already. I want to point to my favorite book, Harry Potter as a series, and specifically Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. He, being Harry, walked on, hardly aware of the route he was taking, for he had pounded these streets so often lately that his feet carried him to his favorite haunts automatically. Every few steps he glanced back over his shoulder. Someone magical had been near him as he lay among Aunt Petunia's dying begonias. He was sure of it. Why hadn't they spoken to him? Why hadn't they made contact? Why were they hiding now? Did you see it? In this section, Harry references someone, aka one person, magical, had been near him, and then wonders why they, that person, hadn't spoken to him. Why hadn't they made contact? Where were they hiding now? When we're referencing someone we don't know, I believe often they and them roll off the tongue pretty naturally. I think a lot of us do it in the course of our conversation. And so we're pointing to this as a specific example of a time when it has happened in literature, some of the greatest literature, I might add, and <laughs> and um, to, to really hold a space for, we're not sure of the gender or sex assigned at birth of this person. And when we're using they and them as a singular pronoun for a person, I think, Part of that nuance is, is being held there with the use of the pronoun. Um, Jess, do you have another example? It just so happens I do. From Beyonce. So Beyonce's song, Freedom. Freedom, freedom, I can't move. Freedom, cut me loose. Freedom, freedom, where are you? Cause I need freedom too. I break chains all by myself. Won't let my freedom rot in hell. Hey, I'm gonna keep running cause a winner don't quit on themselves. Did you catch it? Also, my apologies to Beyonce. <laughs> a winner 
themselves. So these, these examples we pulled easily, you know, it is a matter of listening with intention. And in fact, there are often times when we listen with intention, we still don't hear it. And so the reason that we kind of bring those in is to point out that a lot of times when folks want to use pronouns or feel that, that certain pronouns connect with who they are in a way that is maybe unfamiliar in its particular application, they get a lot of pushback. So you may have people who say, uh, I, well, I get it, like, okay, that's cool and all, but I just can't get behind the singular they. And when I have that experience and I'm talking to somebody else who says, I just can't get it because it's just not English. The subtext for me, what I'm hearing is that they actually can't get behind honoring me in my embodied identity as I am asking to be honored. So I do this work for a living, right? And when I got my professional hat on, I can do that. I can have those conversations. I can say, this is the subtext of what I'm hearing. But I know from working with a lot of young people and also a whole lot of other, other folks who aren't young. I was talking to someone just the other day who was talking about their own decision about whether or not to communicate using they, them with people because they didn't want to have to defend their identity to people. I know a lot of times folks with regard to that, they may not come out to their own family because there's already been a difficult experience in whatever way and they don't want to have to feel belittled in their own identity. So when we talk about that, the singular they appears all the time. You know, I used to have youth who would say, you know, somebody said my pronouns are made up. And, and there was always this funny dialogue there because all words are made up. They don't exist in nature. Words don't exist. They don't grow on trees. They are socially influenced. You know, and again, thinking about that, that three-dimensional fractal image or the, the galaxy that Alex was describing earlier when you add the dimension of time that comes on. We have new ways of understanding who we are and of communicating that with the language. They and them is most often the, the non-binary pronoun people use because it's already in the vernacular. Because it was, I think, in my estimation, and certainly seeing this with the youth, it was a lot easier to just use they, them than to have people continue to say, that's not actually a word. So if we could sit for one minute and think about the experience of what it would be for you, if you haven't experienced this, to have someone tell you that your identity doesn't exist. Even just think about at times, if you've gotten a letter in the mail that said Mrs. and your Mr. or Ms. and your Mrs. or Mrs. and your Ms. You know, and, and even how those things come up in whatever way. That I've heard people that could be a little ding in a way. So think about what it means to spend so much of your time and energy trying to figure out your own sense of self. To come to this liberating place where you say, this is who I am. This makes so much sense. I know for me, my life makes so much sense as I look back on it now with an understanding of my non-binary identity. And then to have someone say, I'm sorry, but I just can't get behind that in a way that's like, I just can't actually take the time because that's not actually a thing that exists. It's hurtful. And certainly it should be a baseline if we're talking about how to really welcome LGBTQIA identified people in a congregation. That should be base. Avoiding the, the temptation to say, I just... Uh, you just can't get it. Because we work really hard to be in community with each other. And that's beautiful. And it's exciting. And this is part of that. It's really important. Why pronouns matter? This is a flyer or a poster that we have that you can download from our website. Uh, these are a few different reasons that kind of come in in terms of why pronouns matter. It helps everybody feel included and respected. I know that if I go to a church and I see pronouns on name tags or pronoun buttons, I actually know this congregation has at least done the work to recognize that pronouns are not something that is assumed, which is the second one. Like it acknowledges that pronouns are not assumed. But I also know that I'm going to feel respected, that I am going to be seen in that, which is great. I also know that with that environment of welcome, there's going to probably, hopefully, have been other ways that they've really considered the, how they welcome folks, which is exciting for me. I also appreciate the specific and intentional use of pronouns, particularly as we just did at the very beginning of the video, to name our own pronouns, because it encourages people to think about their own gender and how they want to be identified. And what I found in doing rounds of 
naming your own pronouns in a meeting, for example, or having a pronoun button, as you talked about, that sometimes someone will start to claim a pronoun that they didn't think they were able to do, that they that they have been wondering about for a while, and this was a space to try it out because they know that with that intentionality that folks are going to want to to be able to respect and uh, not assume pronouns and help people think about their own gender that we were talking about earlier around when you know who you are, you can more easily and readily welcome someone who you don't know. It's also a way to show folks that you're serious about being an ally. Again, talking about living into welcome and what that means. To me, the idea of even even opening a question, you know, people have asked, well, how do I do that? And it's like, start every conversation, not just with folks who you may suspect um, are are trans or non-binary, but every conversation. When you're having a session meeting, start it off by your name and pronouns. Even if you know everyone's gender identity within this group, it gets people thinking. And it lets me know, it lets other folks know that you're serious about your allyship. One of the things that makes me happiest is just thinking about some of the folks I know from my church who've worn their she, her, he, him buttons who identify as cisgender and they're wearing it. And it's also not a thing where they come up to me and say, hey, did you notice that I'm wearing Like they're just doing it because they're living into who they are because they're serious about being an ally. Yes. And lastly, it ensures that folks get everyone's pronouns right or as right as we can as many times as we can. The thing I love about a visual cue for a pronoun is that as a visual person, I can see it right there and make sure that I'm addressing you with the pronoun that you want without even having to ask. And then if we're in a space where that's not really possible and we just keep asking each other (laughs) or naming each other our own pronouns, it shows that we're really trying to get it right. And even if we stumble or mess up a pronoun sometimes, we can get right back on track and have the expectation and assumption that we are really striving to get it right as much as we can. So Alex and I thought it would be best to do a little bit of modeling around how to live into and share our pronouns. So. We're going to kind of have a little bit of a conversation and talk back and forth about how to model a singular they and how to model introducing ourselves with our pronouns. How's that sound? That sounds great. Let's pretend that we just saw each other at church and we haven't met before. Hey there, um, I am Alex and I don't know if we've met before. Thanks for for coming to church today. because we haven't met, I wanted to share that I use he and him pronouns. Um, what, What is your name and what pronouns do you use? Hey, uh, my name is Jess. Thanks so much. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, and I use they, them pronouns. And I really appreciate you asking. Great. It's so good to meet you. Let's go to coffee downstairs. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I love church coffee. So Alex and I were being kind of silly there. Uh, but I appreciated him noting the, the point about, like, because we haven't met before, I'm going to introduce you and I would like to know your pronouns and I, these are my pronouns. Uh, so that helped me as somebody who presents in a way that's a bit more uh, androgynous or maybe a bit more unclear. It let me know that he was he was also saying, this is who I am. Uh, he also let himself kind of step out into that bit of a vulnerable space in a way where he shared his pronouns. Uh, he didn't say, well, of course, this is how I look. Um, and he also used the specific pronouns of he and him. Uh, so he didn't say, I use masculine pronouns or I use feminine pronouns. And while a lot of times he or she are identified as more masculine or feminine pronouns, the specificity of he, him allows a more nuanced understanding of what it is actually to be masculine or feminine in whatever way. This is them. There's a specificity to that. It's nice. It was invitational. It also let me use my pronouns first. So I didn't have to go through the process of trying to figure out whether or not I could or should share my pronouns or when will I do I wait to be misgendered? How do I kind of So it was a great way to sort of start that. Next, we were going to do a brief modeling about how to talk about somebody who is not here and how to use the singular they in a sentence. So this is a conversation about our friend, Steve. Hey, Jess, have you heard about our friend Steve's new trip? No. What about their trip? Where'd they go? Well, they are going to the Outer Banks and I can't wait to join them in a few weeks. Do you want to come with us? I would love to come with you. Yeah. Well, Steve, because they recently they recently had to move away from North Carolina, so I know they were really missing it. So I bet they're really excited to be able to come back and spend some time uh, in the Outer Banks again, because I know that was one of their favorite places. 
Yeah, they love it here. And see. See? Um, you know, sometimes when I'm working with folks on adopting and getting more comfortable with the use of they, I actually invite folks to write a sentence um, with the use of they for a singular pronoun, just like we saw in Harry Potter and Beyonce, that people can read and try it out because it is a little bit like learning a, a, a new language or a new word that we're not as familiar with, even if they is something we've used for a long time for a lot of different ways. We're using it in kind of a, a way we may not have noticed we were using it before. So I think even writing down a sentence with your friend Steve or someone uh, that you don't know, you can make up an invisible person, um, to try it out can be a way to actually get more comfortable with it. So. Um, Perhaps even today in your groups, as you're watching this video, you might want to take a moment and do that and then share your sentence with someone else. This is not to grammar police people, but to really have an experience of, of forming the words in our mouths so that next time it won't feel as strange. It's just like anything else we learn. It's just practicing. It's getting used to uh, speaking in a new way. I, I would also, again, just remind that this is a really exciting way for us to learn how to live into who we are as people of God and how to live into our welcome of people, of all people, but how to also take particular notice of LGBTQIA folks within our communities. Great. So if you want to have a chance to practice, I invite you to take a look at the practices of inclusion worksheet. There's a little triangle and a section called what words do I use to describe myself so that you can start practicing how you might introduce yourself as I did to someone you don't know, sharing the invitation to model your own pronouns. And then there's a place to really try out a couple of those sentences, um, either using a singular they or inviting someone to share with you who they are. See how I did there? Um, so you could even take a few minutes to work on that before ending your lesson today.